On this week's show, Talisman is coming to PS4, UK Games Expo is looking for volunteers, and the Pillars of the Earth board game is getting a reprint. Hello and welcome to the Fancy News Show from The Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boita and this is your weekly fix of fantasy goodness. The London Anime and Gaming Con returns again this February. Yes, the three-day event for anime, video gaming and cosplay is back with lots of activities and special guests. Activities include anime cinema, talks from leading anime creators and fans, a manga workshop and artist alley, the gaming tournament zone, cosplay masquerade, and I do believe there's a bit of a cash prize for the winners, plus there's lots more activities to be announced, and there's also special guests, and the guests of honour this year are A-list voiceover actor, <laughs> does that make sense? Who knows? Voiceover actor, voice actor, I think they're just voice actors, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, not voiceover, just, anyway, I'll get on with it. A-list voice actor Quinton Flynn is going to be guest of honour, plus cosplay star Annie Mayer. There will be uh, lots of traders that will be there, obviously, because that's kind of the point of these conventions, I believe, that there's loads of merchandise for you to buy. All the fun takes place from the 3rd to the 5th of February at the Rocket Complex, London Metropolitan University. And you can find out about all of this if you visit their website, which is www.winter.londonanimecon.com. And of course, we will be putting the links in the description of this episode. Birmingham Horrorcon takes place on Saturday the 4th of February. This is a one-day event and it features special guests from the horror film industry. And of course, there's going to be stalls packed with horror merchandise. And you can have your chance to meet and I think you can also have your photograph taken. It didn't specifically say that on the website, but I think you can pay a little bit of money to get your photograph taken with these special guests. And they include Tony Moran, who played Michael Myers, Ken Segos, and I don't know how to pronounce this one, Juice Garcia, Carolyn Monroe, plus they've got lots more too as well. They also have cool exhibitors including horror artist William the Psycho Slaughterman Anderson, if you're going to have a nickname, that's certainly the one to have, horror artist Bob Ford, and also horror portrait artist Mr. Mark Kill... <laughs> hang on, Mark... Hang on, Mark Zilla. There you go, let's try that again. Horror portrait artist, Mr. Mark Zilla. The celebrations take place on the 4th of February at the Edgbaston Stadium, Birmingham. It's going well today, isn't it? Here we go, you can obviously find out more information if you visit their website, which is horrorfan.co.uk. Talisman is coming to the PlayStation 4. Oh yes, this is big news for Talisman fans. Games Workshop have uh, teamed up with Nomad Games, and Nomad Games have previously brought Talisman to the PC. They are now transferring it to the PlayStation 4. This follows on from the news that the board game company Fancy Flight are no longer printing the fourth edition of the board game of Talisman. That license is now coming back to Games Workshop. So this presumably is the first announcement of many that they're going to be doing with the Talisman brand. Um, it's obviously very exciting news. It's just a shame it's not on the Xbox One because that's the console that I have. Anyway, for those of you that don't know anything about Talisman, we have done lots of reviews of them. We've done the digital edition, so that's the one obviously for the PC. Plus we've also done the board game reviews. We've got the uh, base game plus all the expansions as well. And we will be putting links in the description so you can find those easily. If not, obviously just look on our channel. And what else am I gonna say about that? Oh yes, there's no release date as of yet, but it's expected round about springtime. That's what they're saying. And if you'd like to know more and you can see the teaser trailer, then you can visit nomadgames.co.uk slash talisman PS4. Speaking of talisman, I have stumbled across a ultimate board game upgrade uh, company, Spare Oom Studio, and that's O-O-M, I guess like Spare Room, Spare Oom Studio. They make 3D printed custom miniatures for board games, and they do have Talisman on the list. 
It's uh, created by Levon, forgive me if I've pronounced your name wrong there, Levon Archer, and he is the man behind the vision. He has created the necessary 3D files that then you can just, uh, you can, I think you can just purchase the files if you then want to print it out yourself. Or he has a service where you can also print out, he prints out the figures and sends them to you as well. They're not the actual figures, because obviously the board game does come with the figures themselves, you know, the characters. They are other things on the board, such as the Crown of Command, a Portal of Power, the Sentinel, the City, and of course, a talisman. So how cool is that? They do look amazing. There's, they're really nicely done. There's all the detail there. They look really, really professional. He's taken obviously a lot of time and care with it. I'm pretty sure he's a talisman player because you, you know, why would you pick on talisman necessarily? And why go to all this trouble? They look gorgeous. And you can see a, a full list, um, if you want to, obviously, order them at levion, which is L-E-A-V-O-N, dot co dot uk slash online dash store. Um, plus, if you want to see them painted, because obviously they're 3D printing, they just come, you know, grey like you, the normal uh, figures would do in the base game. If you want to see them all painted, they're Talisman Island, which is a, a great website for Talisman resources. They have a great article showing a lot of them that are painted, and you can go to talismanisland.com for those. First Call of Cthulhu trailer shows off a new video game. Focus Home Interactive have released a new teaser, teaser trailer for HP Lovecraft's Call of Cthulhu. The new horror RPG is based on the short story of the same name. The actual game is being developed, though, by French studio I think it's Cyanide Studio, I think that's how you pronounce it, which previously worked on Blood Bowl, oh God, with the mean names, this is terrible, especially fantasy, because it's all weird names. I think it's Styx, Master of Shadows, and the Game of Thrones RPG. The game puts you in the shoes of Edward Pierce, a private investigator in the 1920s era Boston, as he investigates the death of a woman and her family. It looks amazing, it looks really creepy and kind of a little bit gothic and a little bit ghost story-ish. And Call of Cthulhu is planned for a 2017 release on the PC, PS4 and thank God the PS1. And you can view the trailer if you visit to callofcthulhu-game.com or you can obviously have a look on YouTube. UK Games Expo are looking for volunteers and also they're looking for the next big board game. The UK's biggest tabletop gaming convention, UK Games Expo, is seeking volunteers to help run this year's event. Volunteer work could be anything from loading and unloading a van, you know, someone's got to do it, and helping set up the show during Thursday and Friday, or being the face of the expo during the opening hours of the event. UK Games Expo provide one of the best ex expenses packages, apparently, for its volunteers of any gaming convention in the country. Now, that was taken directly from their website. I do believe that because they are a huge gaming convention. We uh, went there last year, and I also went there along as kind of like a little punter looking around, seeing what it was like. We actually had a stand there last year, and it was very well organised. It was very professional, and we had a great time. Thoroughly recommend going there. So if you are volunteering, if you like board games, and this is a great way to go in there, you might get a chance to play games. I think you do, but it does say that you will be working hard, so bear that in mind. But if you stay for the whole weekend, I believe you do get some free accommodation, which is always a bonus. Plus, they have announced that submissions are now open for their Wevin's Lair competition which is basically Dragon's Den for tabletop games. Obviously, Dragon's Den would be the perfect name as well, but obviously that's already taken by the BBC. So, if you think you've a game that will do really well in the marketplace, then the judges are waiting for your submission. The game concept should be more than just in your head, though. It should already be developed so far as a prototype um, and has been playtested a few times. Now, I didn't really look into too much detail about what they mean by prototype. That could simply be mean you just drawing it out on a bit of card and have, you know, if it's, you know, you use cards, just basically paper and, you know, and, and shop bought tokens. I don't think you have to be spending a load of money on a prototype to make it look really, really professional to then enter this. 
Um, it's a great idea, this, because it does obviously give people who think, yeah, I've got a great idea for a board game or a card game, to go along, pitch your idea. There are six judges, and they are Cesar al Jezar of Alicat Games, there's Paul Brandt of Games Law, there's Duncan Malloy of Osprey Games, Peter Blank, sorry, Blankhan of Inside the Box Board Games, Alex Jaeger of Mayfair Games, and Lewis Shaw of Brain Crack Games. So some procedures people from the industry. For further details of how to volunteer and how to submit your board game ID, you can visit their exhibition, not their exhibition, <laughs> hey, their website, which is ukgamesexpo.co.uk. The Pillars of the Earth board game is finally getting a reprint. Yes, fans of board games, this is long-awaited news. It's all based on the hugely popular and best-selling novel of the same title by Ken Follett. And the board game has proved a wow with the critics and fans alike over the last 10 years. According to Board Game Geek's Twitter feed, Thames and Cosmos will be the publishers. And it was originally published in Mayfair Games back in 2006. So obviously it's out of print at the moment and I have seen on eBay some ridiculous prices for second-hand games. Um, I think I saw one for 50 quid, there was one for like 80 quid, 100 quid. I was very fortunate, I managed to buy my own copy and we have done a review of that as well, so you can check that out. Now we're not 100% sure if they're gonna be revamping it completely, giving it a complete, you know, artistic overhaul, you know, and changing the artwork or changing the components or anything like that. I kinda hope they don't because they did a really good job on it, but I guess because it's been quite a few years now since the previous game, maybe they're going to completely redesign it. Who knows if they're gonna change any of the rules. It's a very, very good game to begin with, so hopefully they won't change too much of it. The release date is planned for late 2017 or early 2018, which ties in nicely because there is another book in the Pillars of the Earth series from Ken Follett in September. And if you haven't heard, Disney have announced the title farts for Star Wars 8. Drum roll, please. We're going to do a drum roll, Julian. I thought we were going to special effects that, but anyway, keep going. It is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Yes, you probably knew that already, but I thought, obviously, it's such big news, but sneak it in at the end. Kickstarter news. Themes of Folklore is a fantasy-themed playing deck card from Ghastly Games. A 54 card uh, deck will be created with each suit represented by a different fantasy creature from folklore. So we have the clubs, they're now monsters, diamonds are witches, hearts are vampires and spades are spirits. The campaign lets backers join their design committee on Facebook which gives you the chance to vote to select the artwork that will make it onto the cards, which I think is a great idea. They're going to give you a selection and then you get to choose which are your favourites, which ones you want to go onto the cards. Um, the artwork is actually reworking of the previous Ghastly Games Ghost Hunter project, so they were card games previously by Ghost Hunter, sorry, by Ghastly Games, and they were illustrated by Augustinias Raganaski. Forgive me for the pronunciation. The artwork looks beautiful, I really, really like it. There's some lovely images that they've put up so you can have a look. And I like them so much that I actually have backed this project. So let's get it backed. Um, they've lots of stretch goals as well and some add-ons from a t-shirt to Ghost, Hard Ghost Hunter card games, the previous games. They're also add-ons if you like. The campaign finishes up. Excuse me. <laughs> Bit of dry mouth. The campaign finishes on the 5th of February. Le Grand Legacy Tale of the Fatebound is an epic fantasy from Second Coming Games for the PC. In Le Grand Legacy, you play Finn, who is a young slave who wakes up without any memory of his past. Probably on the drink, maybe. Yet, he soon discovers that he possesses mysterious powers beyond his control. There we go. The game has 3D cinematic cutscenes, an original soundtrack, 3D models combined with 2D hand-drawn backgrounds, which sounds interesting, action-packed action turn-based combat and tactical warfare scenarios, and you can recruit uh, non-player uh, characters to rebuild your castle. You can play mini-games and go on rewarding side quests as well. 
Now they have created two pre-alpha demo versions so you can try the game before you back the game. Plus they've got lots of video clips and screenshots of the artwork and actual screenshots as well. It does look quite stunning. I was quite drawn to this one. Now they have also been working on it for the past two years. So they are committed, they are dedicated to making this happen. And obviously all that hard work is there to, to see. They've not been mucking around basically. It's nearly funded and it finishes on the 17th of February. Under Cities is a short story anthology that focuses on LGBTQ narratives in an urban fantasy setting. Published by Dirty Bird Press, the anthology brings together stories that weave magic of urban fantasies together with positive interpretations of race and gay sexuality. There are 11 authors who include Laura J. Moody, Jordan Nicole, Rowan O'Connor and Price Scott. The book will both be printed in printed form, an actual copy, and digital, as it's actually over 300 pages long. So that is very impressive. They also have a few rewards and stretch goals too for you. I recommend checking this one out. It kind of, again, it kind of drew me in with the subject matter there. It seems something different, something really focused, and it seems like they're very committed to this project. And uh, they have smashed their target, by the way, and the campaign finishes on the 15th of February. A bit of bottled imp news. I have set myself a reading challenge. Yes, I'm going to be reading and reviewing all 41 Discworld novels by the late, great, fantastic Terry Pratchett. Yes, I'm gonna be doing that before the year is out. So, by my reckoning, where are we now? You know, there's 52 weeks in a year, so I'm kind of gonna have to be doing like one a year because we're getting into February now. So not one a year, that'd be very slow. One a week, um, which is quite a challenge, but I thought I'm up for it because I have read about the first 10 books years ago. I pretty much, when they first came out, loved them, and then for some reason, reason just drifted away from the series. And I was curious to know where he's taken the series, you know, where he actually developed the series. Because there's lots of strands, there's lots of different areas of the Discworld universe that he explores. So not all the characters are in all the books, which is very intriguing. So you can stay tuned for regular updates on how I'm getting on. Plus, obviously, the reviews will start coming out thick and fast. And on this week's Friday Fantasy Show, I'm going to be reviewing fantasy short story collection, Exorus, if that's how you pronounce it, Exorus, I think it is. It's volume one and it's published by Exorus magazine. And you can check that review out to see what I thought of it on the Friday Fantasy Show. But that's all we have time for because Julian's winding me up in more ways than Five, one. Until four, next time, remember to keep it unreal. Two,